Hi, this is John, and welcome to a very brief review of the Net Backup Accelerator for VMware um, to review what is possible with the performance uh, from Windows Flash to an accelerated backup. Um, first, what we're looking at is the VMware vSphere of a standard Windows Server 2008 R2 64 bit client. As you can see, the host name SV Ash App DT1. And you can see that it is uh, configured with four hard drives, four hard disks uh, 55 gig, a 25 gig, a 1.95 terabyte, and a 1.66 terabyte. This hard disk number three is the data that we're, we were backing up with a uh, Windows. Uh, flash backup policy type with net backup uh, oh and the the back end is data domain and this is a raw disk uh, a raw device mapping uh, provision from the SAN and what I wanted to do is test out the accelerated backup so what I did was uh, because I didn't need quite the large footprint of 1.95 terabytes I created a smaller uh, VMware VMFS data store uh, as we can see here hard disk number four and if I bring over the RDP session the remote desktop session of the Windows 2008 server SV Ash App DT1 we can look in disk management and we can see that there's a C drive a Q drive which is you know just small drive and this is the drive that we were backing up with the Windows Flash and I've since removed the drive because I had to cut over the data for the application that's uh, using that uh, space and here's the drive at the VMFS data store and since this short video is just to show the performance difference with Net Backup uh, let's go ahead and go right to the Net Backup console so here we see the VMFS at 1700 gig and here's the old drive of 2000 gig uh, same data pretty much a little bit of change right there and let's get rid of this bring up net backup so uh, on the 17th uh, it happens to be April 17th uh, we had a Windows flash policy uh, flash backup for Windows policy backing up just the the data drive which was the I drive the old RDM drive the raw device mapping and as you can see it took an elapsed time of 26 over 26 hours to back up a uh, a full backup schedule uh, to the data domain and if we looked at that policy type real quick You can see that it's flash backup for Windows, and the backup selection is whack whack dot whack i colon, and that's that policy. So let's quickly go ahead and look at the new policy, which is a VMware type policy that we have in the policy type selection window, and the client is the Windows client. Backup selections all local drives, and under VMware, which you get when you select the VMware t policy type. Uh, we have all the different options selected here that we can advanced in this particular case I have it including all disks which is going to exclude the RDM disk which is okay because I no longer need that disk and the virtual machine quiesce is set to enabled and let's go ahead and look at the activity monitor real quick and the first time running it um, with the VMware policy type and the accelerator enabled which I don't think I showed here's the important part use accelerator with that checked off uh, it goes ahead and leverages the change block tracking feature of ESX and it goes ahead and looks at the looks for the existence of a file that matches the policy name that you're running and in this case one was not found but it did run for 12 hours and 49 minutes and after the first initial baseline seeding of the data uh, we kicked off another backup which now uses the CBT tracking and it reduced from 20, uh, 12 hours to 15 minutes 
and I forget how long I can do this video for. I th I'm using Microsoft Expression Free version, and I thought it was five minutes, but I think it's going for a little bit longer than that. So let's go ahead and go into detail here. So just to review, the original policy was 26 hours. Now that was backing up straight to the Windows, uh, the NetBackup client that's installed on the Windows 2008 host. So that means it's going, you know, using the CPU cycles of the VM guest, which is the Windows 2008 server, uh, through, you know, ESX. And when I configured the VMware policy, uh, that doesn't matter if the uh, VM guest is powered on or off, it's going through the ESX and just getting the VMDK files. That ran in 12 hours, so that was a, a nice reduction there, uh, just going over the ESX uh, Ethernet. And once change block tracking was enabled, uh, once it saw that file out there that creates that was created, you can see that it says archive bit processing disabled uh, because accelerator is enabled. And you can see that because it was able to leverage that file that it creates, I forget where it creates the file. I think it creates it on the media server, but I went looking for it. I couldn't find it real quick, so I just wanted to do this video. Um, but you can see that it was a 99.8% reduction. And you can see the speed. Uh, when it was backing up straight from the client, it was 18,000 kilobytes per second. Uh, that was bumped up to 30,000 kilobytes per second when it was doing the VMware to the ESX host instead of the VM guest Ethernet. <coughs> and then that increased to 1,614,000 uh, once it was using the CBT tracking. So again, y you've reduced from 26 hours down to 12 hours down to 15. Um, one more thing I wanted to show. There's been a little bit of differences uh, found as far as best practices go, uh, how to create a policy. I haven't created a cumulative policy here, but what I did want to show was what I've been doing is they do recommend a uh, accelerator forced rescan every so often. So what I do is do it sometime within the same window so that that will take precedence over the, the normal uh, daily calendar based full backup that I have set to run. And again, I'm running out of time here, but... Okay, well anyways, that's the performance difference between non-accelerated and accelerated. I think I'll take the 15 minutes. Thanks for watching.